Hello and welcome to this week's Scan It Saturday. This week I just wanted to take a few minutes to give you a couple of ideas for using the path tools that you'll find in ScanNet Canvas. These are quite creative tools but often overlooked because we're not sure what to do with them. So for today I'm going to give you just a couple of ideas and then hopefully you can try it out for yourself and find many other ways to use them in your crafting. Right, so let's get started. I'm logging in as normal uh, through my login page on Scanning Cut Canvas. I'm just clearing away this message and starting a brand new project. Now to give me a better view and you a better view, I'm just clearing down the um, basic shapes panel and also zooming in to this top section of mat. Now I've got pretty much edge to edge visibility on the uh, cutting mat. Now the tools that I'm referring to, the path tools are up here. And this one is just called path and that has a shortcut key of P. And this one is called freehand paths and has a shortcut, Q, uh, shortcut key of Q. Not easy to say. Uh, I'm just going to be using this one today though, the path tool. So to get started with that, I just press the P key and we can now see that's highlighted and ready to activate and work. To use the path tool, we're basically plotting points. So I use my left uh, mouse key to click and plot various points to create uh, whatever shape or design that I want to. Now to finish a line, I can double click, but this doesn't close off the shape. I've got two options in that instance. I can either continue adding points until I get to the uh, first node that I created and then overlap it, and I'll show you that one in a second. But the main one that I've got uh, available to me is the open closed outline. And just by clicking that, a line is created from the last node that we made to the first node that we made, and that closes off that shape, ready for us to do whatever we want to do to it. So we can obviously resize it as normal, we can rotate it as normal, and we can do various other things. One thing that we can do is change the node types, and obviously where we've plotted a node, generally we've got a um, straight corner. So it's indicated up here by the phrase straight. If I change that to curve, what will happen is now two little handles will appear and they'll be attached to these two nodes. By moving these handles, I can get a curve going on uh, from node to node. So I can make that a bit more S-like. And I can change any number of these to curves instead of straight lines to get the effect or, or the result or design that I want. By stretching them out further, you get more of a curve. And also by rotating them, you get different curves. And these will depend on the others that are set around it. We can move nodes if we need to for any reason to stretch them out or reposition them to get um, perfect lineage on our design. And again, I can use these handles. Now, if for any reason these do get a bit too much and get in the way, we can hide those and just work with the nodes which is great if you are just literally converting them or deleting them or adding them. If, however, you want to edit the curves, you do need to unselect that and release the control points to be able to use them. OK, so that's basically the path tool. Lots and lots of power within that tool, but really only when you start experiment, experimenting will you discover it. So I'm just going to delete that shape that I made there and start from scratch. So shortcut key of P activates the tool and I'm going to use my background grid to help me position the nodes that I'm going to create here. Now the first design I'm going to create is just purely by plotting those nodes as I did before. So I'm going to create these just roughly on these intersections of that grid. Now remember before I was saying that I can hover my um, cursor over the first node to make a con uh, contained shape that's how you do it. You literally hover it over, you'll see the cursor change, and then you'll be able to close that shape. Now this for me is a bit blocky. I've got two choices. I can either go back into this shape and start editing these uh, to become curves and then adjusting them, or I can actually start from scratch by activating my P key again. And this time on my first node, I click and release. 
On my second node, I'm going to left click and drag. So I'm automatically creating those curve handles or those control points. <clears throat> when I get to a position I like, I literally release the mouse key. And then what I have is this sort of stretch elastic bandy bit that I can then take to the next position that I want to create. So if I say that one's going to be here, this time I'm going to uh, just single left click and that'll give me a sharp point. Now, bearing in mind where I put my last node, I'm going to put this next one here. And again, I'm going to click and drag those handles out so that I end up with a nice curve. Release the mouse key and then drag this boundy bit up to the first node. And we've got almost like a leaf shape going on there. Just with four nodes, we created that. Two curves and two straight points. So you can see we can start doing things like eyes, leaves, petals and things like that. We can get a little bit more complex and I'll go back in, select P to start, single click to give my first anchor point and then I'm going to click and drag here, out to here, then I'm going to come halfway down one of those blocks, click once. That's set the last shape and it's also given me this line to go into the next stage with. So I'm going to go ahead a couple of blocks, go down to that middle bit. This time I'm going to click and drag this way, vertically almost. So we're creating almost like a second um, curve as we had before. Release your mouse key and then we've got again this thing that we can drag around and it's almost like a preview of what the line is going to be like. And single click in here. Remember we've got that straight line so we want to next click and drag like we did before. Click out, release and then drag that point back to the beginning. And we've now got a fairly unusual shape. Again as I said you can resize these, stretch them out, do whatever you need to do. You can of course weld these as you would any other shape. So we could take this petal that we did before align them and then weld them and that again will give us something very very unique. So as you can see you can build up um, designs in parts or in all in one go, depends how brave you're feeling, but this for me I think is a little better than this. So just getting the hang of those points and those nodes and how to edit these shapes really does give you um, a fantastic head start on you know, creating your own very unique shape. So I'll just do one more and then I'll show you a way of uh, potentially even just using those. So again, single click to start. I'm going to go over three and up one. That's according to my grid. I'm going to drag this out quite far. And then when I release it, that will curve back on itself if I drag it in here, which I think is fantastic. Single click in here. And then I'm coming here and again dragging all the way out two blocks. Release and then I can just take this original point, close it off and there I've got a little heart. How cute is that? This could of course be another petal for a flower. I'm a bit obsessed with these. Now if I wanted to do that what I could do is just press the D key three times to give myself three copies of that petal. With each one I'll rotate it to be at an angle. By the way I'm holding the shift key down as I rotate this one because then it rotates in specific angles as opposed to just being random. I line those up and I weld those. I'm going to take this one, bring it over, shift, click and rotate roughly position it where I need it to be. Shift click and rotate this one, bring it in. Now I've mentioned this before but just once again if you're trying to select shapes like this and they always end up selecting something you didn't want that's because basically the scan and cut canvas will select anything that this blue bounding box touches. If you want to get around this and just select two particular things or three particular things select your first one then press and hold the shift key on your keyboard and then left click on the next shape that you want to select. That just gives you a way of cherry picking from what you've got available. Okay, I'm just aligning these and then I'm going to weld these two together. 
And then I'm going to select both of these. Uh, sorry, all of these. Oh, hang on. They weren't overlapping by the looks of it, so they didn't weld. So I'll just do that once more. And then I'll select both of these shapes, align them on both the horizontal and vertical axes, and then weld those together. Now this is a great little flower because you could cut this out, layer these over each other. For example, uh, if I just show you briefly, so you could have these overlapping each other once they're cut out. You could resize the um, next layer to be a little bit smaller so you can get all creative just with that path tool. Isn't that fabulous? OK, I'm going to leave it with you at this point because uh, there's obviously a fair bit of practice that you can have a go at with that one. And next week, I'll try and look at um, creating an entire project using a variety of the things that we've got available and some of the things that we've learned over the last few years. So that should be interesting and fun. Thanks for watching. Do take care. And obviously, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Or if you're on any of these other social networking sites, you can find me there. Bye for now.